In conversation with R.S. Cobb, Raymond Sinclair Cobb is an independent author from Cobbton, California. He's a creative powerhouse, scripting mind-blowing words that leave you utterly spellbound. Rocked up for epic journey across, across fantasy, science fiction, and horror. With a bachelor degree in creative writing from Full Sail University, R.S. Cobb's storytelling skills are finely tuned. His books are packed with unforgettable characters and extraordinary experiences that will sweep you off your feet. But it doesn't stop with books. R.S. Cobb is also a dedicated family man, sharing his love for storytelling with his loved ones, igniting their imagination for generations to come. Already 10 books deep, R.S. Cobb is always on the on for new horizon to captivate readers like you. Imagination is a superpower and invite publishers, magazines and editors to join him on this truly journey. And on today's episode of Photo Interview, it's my utmost pleasure and joy to open the show today, R.S. Cobb. How are you doing, Raymond? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure actually to have you on the show today. Quite exciting. We're going to be having a conversation around your books. So Raymond, you know, I see that you've authored a lot of books, but I would like us to start today's conversation with your epic fantasy in the name of Black God, Way to the Askari, which I found the description page of it on Amazon to be quite absorbing. And I would like to ask you, how does this book come about? What inspired you to write Black God? So um, Black Guard is inspired by uh, different uh, mediums and entertainment, mm -hmm. um, video games, uh, anime, mm -hmm. American cartoons, um, fantasy stories that I've read myself. So basically, um, um, I just had this idea about this story about these two brothers, and I kind of just developed that idea over time until I had mm -hmm. the essential plot for the, the book. Yeah, that's actually so amazing. I mean, the fact that it's developed by you also seeing a bit of anime also sounds quite amazing to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you also have taste from the Other Side book series, which I do love the title name. And for readers who haven't read that series yet, and also without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what we'd expect in terms of teams picking up tales from the other side? Yeah, so uh, Tales from the Other Side is inspired by books like Goosebumps, where like every book is its own self-contained story. So um, it's supposed to be like little short 10-minute uh, um, reads that you kind of just dive in and, and read it. And they're mm. supposed to be like quick little stories. So every book in the Tales from the Other Side series has a different um, main protagonist, different antagonist, different plot. They're each about different things, but they all range from um, science fiction to horror. So they mm. stay around their genres, those genres. Yeah, if you have copies of this book, I know you have a copy by, right beside you there. Well, you have, if you have other copies of this book, could you show to the camera just so we can see what it looks like? Yeah, that's good. So let's go back to the way of the Ascari. Can you explain the main theme of the story? Also, how did you come up with the concept of Boko and its corrupted form? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Boko. Yeah, this is Boko. So um, the main themes are uh, brotherhood, loyalty. Um, there's a lot of things of fatherhood. You see a lot of different father-son um, dynamics. Um, also, uh, about having integrity and... Um, there's a lot of uh, lessons in there about like pride and hubris um, and arrogance and, and stuff like that. The concept of Boko uh, came to me from like uh, magic and fantasy stories, mm -hmm. but the main I was influence of Boko is probably the Force in Star Wars. Oh. There are a lot of similar letters between like um, the Force <clears throat> and Jedi and how they use like lightsabers in the Force and Boko. Oh. That sounds quite fun, really. And I, yeah. and I need to mention that I love this your title names. Like, you have an amazing titles. 
uh, they're quite captivating. So I was wondering, are you come about with your title names? Is there anything that particularly inspire from one to another? So when um, originally when I first started writing the story, I was going to call it something simple like sorcerers or uh, spellcasters. And uh, I didn't like that. I wanted something that was completely original that you don't hear all the time. So when I was doing Absolutely. my piece, for, yeah. um, uh, blackguard was a term that uh, that stuck out. It's, it, it is used in other mediums, that I believe, like uh, tabletop RPGs and stuff like that. But you don't really hear it a lot. So I was like, this is perfect for my story because um, it's different, you know, and, it's, and it kind of stands out. As far as the Ascari, um, I wanted the main group of soldiers or warriors who have a unique name. And I wanted to, you know, tie it back to my roots as an African-American. So I kind of thought to myself, OK, let me look up some different languages and dialects in the, in the motherland and see what I can come up with. Mm. And a scarf is a Swahili word, and it just stuck out immediately when I was doing my research. And I was like, "Yeah, that's it." Mm, yeah, this actually sounds quite great to me. Thank you for mentioning. I love the sound of it. Thank you. Now, owing to your amazing description, I would like to ask you: What are the major conflicts fixed by the characters? Who are the main protagonists, and what motivates them? And also. Do you have plans for a sequel or a continuation of the story? Yeah, so the two major characters um, in the book, well, it's actually more than two major characters, but the two main protagonists mm. are uh, Suma and Ru, and their father, uh, Baku. And mm. uh, basically, um, their their lives are all kind of intertwined. When Uzuma and Ru were children, their village was destroyed. And you kind of see this in the dream sequence that Uzuma has at the beginning of the book. And um, Baku is an Ascari, but when he saved them, he was injured by a weapon that left shards of it in his body. And mm. the type of material that the weapon is made out of interferes with his boat, with his Baku. And so he can't use his magic because if he does, those materials in his body causes him to age rapidly. So uh, because of this, both Uzuma and Ru feel like they owe a debt to Baku. And so they go to this training where they want to become Ascari, um, Uzuma to avenge the family that he lost when their village was destroyed, and Ru to kind of live up to Baku's legacy and pay him back for saving them when they were children. Mm. Um, the thing is, is that uh, the two boys have their own like internal struggles. Uzuma struggles with his self-doubt and his self-belief and living up to the expectation he puts on himself. Mm. And Ru is kind of arrogant he kind of thinks highly of himself and because of this he gets himself in the situations that he can't always get himself out of mm. and uh -huh. uh, uh, by the end of the book you kind of see them grow and change and come to understand each other more and uh, the events of this book will definitely lead into the next book i have planned in the series wow wow that's quite amazing really i particularly love your description of this Sounds quite lovely and quite great to me. Thank you for mentioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I would also like to know your take on criticism as a writer. You know, as authors, we all have different ways of reacting to feedbacks and criticism of our works. And I'm curious to know your opinion about criticism. How do you react to, say, negative reviews of your books in case you've ever had one in time past? Um, so the majority of the reviews I received in the past have all been like editing based, uh, because when oh. I originally was writing, um, I would just write the book and do like a simple edit and put it out and people would catch typos. It's kind of how I came up with my social media tag, minor typos, mm. um, with, with black art, with black garden specifically, um, I hired a couple editors to go through it to make sure that, um, there were no mistakes. Um, as far as, um, Criticism outside of that, I welcome it. Like, I love criticism. It's the only way to uh, get better as a creator and as an artist and as a writer is to receive mm -hmm. uh, constructive criticism so you can know what areas um, to improve on, what you can do better. There are things that in the writing that I may not have caught that other people case and they might point out. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I need to change that. And so for me, whenever I receive criticism, I kind of just look at it as um, a, a, a way to grow a lesson that's learned and something I can use to move forward 
to improve for when I write the next book. Um, some reviews, I will admit, are heartbreaking when somebody just um, kind of uh, just completely just destroys the book. Oh, I didn't like it, and it's horrible. But I mean, uh, that's you take that risk when you create. Not everybody's going to love your stuff. Mm, I have yeah. more people, more people who don't love it. Absolutely, absolutely. I love your take on criticism. Sounds quite educative and quite interesting to know. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And Gina you know, Raymond, apart from the books we've mentioned so far, do you have any of the works you've authored or say currently working on? I would um yeah, so um, I'm currently uh I have the outline for the next book in the Black Art series. Wow. It was done. I haven't seen it yet, but it is done. But um in the meantime I'm working on creating a uh prequel graphic novel mm. that ties in to the events of the second book. So that way, when there are certain characters that are introduced, you kind of understand their backstory a little more. Mm. Um, also working on a trading card game based on um, the elements, the lore, the, the setting of the Black Guard series in, in the whole. So I'm working on that also. Um, I am still putting out books for the Tales from the Other Side series. Mm. Um, I have one book that I've, uh, I'm about 70% done. I haven't finished it yet just because I've been trying to promote and do events and, and get Black Art out there and build my name up as a writer. But yeah, I have many other things that I'm working on at the moment. Wow, that's quite amazing, actually. I love your take on that, and that's quite a lot you've got ongoing. That sounds like a lot you've got ongoing. Hopefully you find some time to sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a trunk load. Well done, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Now, could you tell us what publishing is like for a published author like yourself? Are there any challenges you've encountered in the process of writing your book and also ever since it got published? And also, if you have any sort of advice for struggling writers, writers who are still struggling to put words together, what would that be? Um, so for me, I pretty much self-publish everything. I have not wow. uh, gone out of traditional publishing yet i've been trying to build up my stock as a writer as far as getting my name out there and just pushing my work and getting my book into the hands of readers so that way when i am ready to send something to a publisher um my writing is at its strongest because I've, I've worked on it for so long uh -huh. um, still even though i've been writing professionally since like 2017 i'm still at the beginning of my writing journey so mm. um so it's all about the journey too, as far as the destination. So I'm just trying to build myself, um, improve my my writing, improve my storytelling ability, and just um get my name out there. As as far as that, everything I do is self published. Um, mm -hmm. thing that I um I have help on is like the illustrations for the book, um the editing of course, and like writing like the blurbs and the promotional mm -hmm. stuff like that. I reach out to others that with that. But as far as like the formatting and the design of the book, like everything I pretty much uh, do myself. As far as um other writers who are coming up who are struggling to write because they're yeah. words, the main important thing is to get it on paper, you know, or or, or get it on a um, you know, a, a word pad or whatever you use to write with. You know, get the idea from your head um to something yeah. concrete. Yeah. Um, I, I, someone told me a long time ago that like the ideas that we have when they're just floating in our heads, they'll leave us and someone else will put out mm. the thing that we came up with. You mm. know? Interesting. Yes, yeah, so I think it's important that that writers, especially just, you know, at the beginning stage, don't worry about if it's perfect. Don't worry about if people are going to like it. You know, just put the words on the paper and then mm. build from it. Wow. That's an amazing advice you've got there. Thank you. And I'm hoping that viewers, including myself, would love to utilize it. Thanks for an amazing advice. Thank you. And now, before we call it a day today, is there anything that you would love to share with the viewers about your books that we did not mention in this interview? I would love the viewers to know. Is there anything? Um, all my writings, you know, you can find on my website, rscob.com. I'm very active on um, Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. Um, you can listen to a preview of the audio book um, uh -huh. On YouTube, listening up to the first uh, three chapters of the book, I believe. Um, also, there's a preview of the first three chapters on Wattpad.com. So, if anybody has a Wattpad account, 
if you go in there and read the first um, three chapters. The book has a lot of art in it. Um, it has a little section in the back that's kind of like a graphic novel. Mm. And uh, you know, I took a, I put a lot of care, time, and attention into um, creating mm. art. And I really made it for people who love, like I said, um, RPG, role-playing games, tabletop RPGs, um, people who love anime, people who love uh, cartoons like Avatar, Naruto, Dragon Ball, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. That's kind of like the crowd that I made this book for. You know, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of action. So if you love action, there's a ton of action in the book. Interesting. I love your take on this. And I left a link in the description part of this interview where interested viewers can get a copy of RS Corp's books directly on Amazon and also on, on its website. I also left a link to his social media and his possible followings. So thank you so much, Raymond, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's awesome having this conversation with you. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me. It was a wonderful experience. Absolutely. It's my pleasure as well. Yeah.